I might be biased given my Asian background, but I find Asian suits just so incredibly comforting, whether I've got maybe a cold or a flu, or maybe I just had a big night. <laughs> so I've put together a compilation of my very favorite Asian soups for you. Some of them take only 10 minutes. Let's go. Comforting chicken and sweet corn soup and I've supercharged mine with some extra veggies because this one is a favorite of my little Charlie. She loves it. In fact, she loves most soups, but she loves this one. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. When I was growing up, when I was little, my parents would take me to a Chinese restaurant and this was one of my favorite soups that I love to order, chicken sweet corn soup. Now I've got a more revamped, more packed full of vegetable version for you guys today because as I said, this one I love making for my little two-year-old. She uh, just adores slurping this one down. So I try and put as many vegetables in as possible. Now we're gonna start off with the chicken broth. We're gonna make that from scratch because I like to do this on a Sunday or on the weekend. I make a huge batch of broth. And I'll use it for any kind of soups for Charlie during the week. So it's just something that I put on the stove, let simmer away. And what I wanna do is just get my chicken, whole chicken into large pot. And this is an Asian style broth. So we're gonna use some Asian style aromatics. And we'll start off with some ginger and some garlic. So I'm gonna crush those. And I want a couple of stems of spring onion. And then one of my little special trick ingredients here is dried shrimp. So you can find this at an Asian grocer or in most major supermarkets these days. And this will add like a background savoriness and kind of boost the flavor of the stock. So it's my little secret ingredient. And then a little bit of soy sauce to get the seasoning starting to happen there. And now just cover that with some water. Now, once I can start to see a little bit of steam and that water has just started simmering, just give that a bit of a stir and then pop the lid on. So I wanna cook this for about an hour. The aim here is to cook it enough so that I get some flavor into the broth, but not too much so that the chicken meat itself becomes flavorless. The longer you boil it, the more you seem to lose the chicken flavor in the chicken. So we wanna find balance there so that we can use both the chicken and the soup. Okay, so let's have a look at our chicken. Over the hour, I've just been skimming off any of those little untoward bits and pieces that rise up to the top. And now I wanna get my chicken out just onto a plate or a tray. Let that chicken cool down and then tear it up into little shreds. You'll have way more than you need for this recipe, but I find that's not a big deal. I'll either use it for another soup or I'll put it in a sandwich or a salad. So many things to do with it. And now the spring onion and any other bits and pieces, I just wanna take those out. And then I'm just gonna strain that stock. Now look at that gorgeous color. That's all good flavor, my friends. Now you don't need all of this, about eight cups is what I usually use for this recipe and the rest can go in the freezer. And now here's where we start to go a little bit rogue with our chicken and sweet corn soup. So I'm gonna add in a whole bunch of cauliflower and this is such a great addition because do you know that if you didn't even know there was cauliflower in this soup, you wouldn't even taste it. So it's a great way to get little kids and big kids to eat a few more veggies. I'm also gonna add some corn kernels. I'm just using frozen corn because I've always got it in the freezer. It's really handy. And I want most of that corn, I'm gonna leave some of that corn at the end because I'll blitz this little mixture in here and I want a few little bits of corn left at the end. Now you wanna simmer this for about 20 minutes or until that cauliflower is really nice and soft. So my cauliflower's ready. I'm gonna go in there with my stick blender. The point is we wanna make this really nice and smooth, get rid of any evidence of that cauliflower. So now that I've got a nice smooth base, I'm gonna add back in my other little whole pieces of corn kernels. And then here's some of that chicken that I shredded up. And look at that, we're starting to get into a regular looking chicken sweet corn soup here. Just wanna thicken this up a little more and add some corn flour that I've mixed with some water. Now look how thick and glossy and amazing that soup is looking. Now I'm gonna add in the eggs. 
want two eggs and just make sure that soup has come back to a gentle simmer and then just slowly drizzle in and pour in that egg. Give it a good mix and oh, I just love all those little streaky creamy bits of that egg in there. Reminds me so much of those childhood Chinese restaurant visits with my parents. Now we haven't added any seasoning here yet since the beginning of our stock making process. So I really want to taste this and see where we're at. Mm. That is such an amazing flavor. You know, I can still taste that little hint of ginger, a little bit of that garlic and spring onion, but mainly really good comforting chicken, sweet corn flavors. Mm, so good. I do need a little bit of salt here. And now we're just serving up. And now just a little sprinkling of spring onion on the top, depending on whether your little or big ones are amenable to some greenery on their dinner. So there you go guys, my take on that restaurant classic chicken and sweet corn soup with a little cauliflower twist. Mm. I just need a couch, a little blankie, some Netflix. Yeah, forget about the uh, toddler. This is totally my kind of dinner as well. Yum. <laughs> Ma. Uber comforting egg drop soup. Wow, I mean, 10 minutes and you've got this. It's freaking insane. This is my 10 minute tomato egg drop soup. All right, guys, so I have a confession. Well, it's not really a confession, it's more like well, just a little bit of news, I guess, because a lot of you have been guessing in the comments on my channel that I'm pregnant. And yes, I am. I'm literally like three weeks away <laughs> from, from bursting or popping or whatever you would call it. <laughs> uh, so this recipe is one of the recipes that I have been cranking out constantly in the past few weeks because as you can imagine, uh, I'm still filming videos for you guys and at the end of the day, I am pretty tired. Uh, so I need something really quick and really comforting and also something that my two-year-old toddler will eat uh, and she loves egg drop soup. I mean, check out how cute she is eating my cauliflower version, which I've done for you guys. So there's the big news, everyone. Yes, I'm super excited. I can't believe that we're nearly there. Uh, and to celebrate, let's make a really awesome soup. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna start with the tomato first of all, because I've got a little trick here that I always do with my tomatoes that I think you guys will really love. It gets the best flavor out of them. And I just want some rough chunks here. And then here's the little secret. Season the tomatoes and let them sit for a little while. The salt will kind of penetrate in there, make the tomatoes a little, like all their juices sort of run. And just a couple of minutes, you know, of them sitting in that little sprinkling of salt is gonna make all the difference. And I always do this, whether I'm just having like tomato toast or using some tomatoes for some pasta sauce, just a little extra step will make everything more tomatoey and extra. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the tomatoes to do their thing with the salt, let's get our eggs organized. And then our spring onion as well. So I want to use the pale part of the spring onion here, and I'm gonna save the greens for a bit later on. And now let's get everything into the saucepan because of course we've only got 10 minutes. A little bit of oil in my pan. And then just have a look at these tomatoes before I add them in. So they've been sitting here like a couple of minutes and you can see they're getting nice and juicy. That salt has really started to absorb into the tomato. Just a little extra step there, makes all the difference. Tomatoes in here, along with those juices and some of that spring onion. And now I just want a little smattering of garlic here. I don't really want a big garlic flavor. I just want like a hint of it in the background to my soup. So just half a clove is good or a quarter even. And now just let these guys kind of get a little mushy with that heat there. A couple of minutes is all you need. Just waiting for some of that tomato to break down. 
And so this one is a great one for any of you guys that might be pregnant as well. I don't know about you, but for me, morning sickness has been quite severe, which isn't really great when you film food, food videos all day. But a really simple flavor like just tomato and egg is something that has been really good for me to stomach. So uh, tell me what you guys have been eating. Uh, if you are also expecting, I would love to hear. All right, so you can see a really good layer of like red mush down the bottom there. That's exactly what we want. I'm gonna add in some chicken stock. Just store-bought is fine. We're not being a hero here today. Uh, if you've got some homemade in the fridge or freezer, that's great. But let's just cheat a little bit here. Just wait for that to bubble up again. So now I'm gonna add in some extra seasoning here, some soy sauce. And then for me, an egg drop soup has that really lovely texture that's kind of luscious and a little thick and, you know, luxurious. And for that, we need some corn flour. I'm just mixed with that with a little bit of water. I just give that a mix and as that kind of simmers away for a minute or so, things will start to thicken up and get nice and shiny in there. Okay, so now when we've got a kind of a rapid boil going here, we want to add our egg. And the secret to getting that beautiful, like web lacy effect on the egg is just to spin around, create a little vortex in the soup, pour that egg into the middle. Oh, I love that little, that little magic that happens when the egg goes in. Oh, just joyful. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of pepper here. And now let's make use of the green part of the spring onion we saved from earlier. Just gonna snip those straight in. And let me just check for seasoning. Oh, I love that flavor. All right, just a little bit more salt for my liking. And that is it. Let's get that out into a bowl. Just look at that ruby red color and that egg. Such a beautiful little pattern. Oh, the simplest things can bring so much joy. Wow, I mean, 10 minutes and you've got this. It's freaking insane. That tomato flavor brings so much umami and just a little bit of tanginess and the soup itself so savory and comforting mm. so good for me silky smooth uber soft wontons in an umami rich chinese broth very simple dish guys but this is the ultimate wonton soup Okay, wonton noodle soup. This is a dish where there is nowhere to hide. Our wonton has to be perfect. Our broth has to be perfect. And just that little tiny sprinkling of the spring onion at the end, that's the only garnish we have. So I got a couple of tips for you guys for getting everything just right. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the broth. Now I'm cheating a little bit here. I'm using a store-bought chicken stock. It's okay, we're gonna jazz it up. I'm gonna start with some ginger. I just want some slices that goes into some stock that I've got warming here on the stove and I want some garlic as well. I just want to crush these guys a little bit. They go in and then for some really subtle background flavor, I'm going to add a couple of these spring onions. I'm just going to bruise them a little bit first to release all of their flavor. Okay, that goes in. And then my secret ingredient is dried shrimp. So these little guys are gonna add some saltiness, some savoriness, just a little hint of background flavor. They're optional, you don't have to use them, but you'll notice the difference if you do. And then for a little bit of seasoning at the beginning, I'm just gonna pour in a little bit of soy sauce. Just give that a bit of a stir. Now I want this to come up to a boil and then I'm gonna reduce the heat down a little bit. Just let it simmer away, bubble away, infuse with all of those flavors for about 20 minutes. If you've got half an hour, that's good as well, but at least 20 minutes. 
Now we need to make our all important wonton filling. So this needs to be super soft and tender to complement the kind of silky texture of our wonton wrapper. So we don't want a filling that's really firm and really hard. So I've got all the little tips and tricks we need to make that happen. First off, we're gonna start off with some pork mince. And I love a pork and prawn combo. So we're gonna do pork and prawn. We've got some prawns here. I just wanna mince these up very fine. I want a little bit of grated ginger. Now, I just take this little piece of ginger and I find it's easy to peel ginger with a spoon. It's just quicker. And I just want to finely grate that ginger. And I also want some white pepper and a little dash of sesame oil is going to make things even more fragrant. And now here come our bits and pieces that are going to turn our wonton filling into something really soft and smooth. We want chicken stock, quite a lot of it, and an egg. And then to help bind everything together and give us the right texture, I'm gonna add a little bit of corn flour and then give this a really good mix. And you will notice this is a really wet mixture. It should almost look to the eye like it's too wet. Okay, that's looking good. Now this kind of wet dumpling filling is really only useful when you're doing dumplings or wontons for a soup because you wouldn't want to deep fry these guys because all of that liquid in there would come out in the oil and the dumpling would burst and you'd get oil everywhere and that would not be great for anyone. Uh, so you use this kind of wet style filling whenever you're doing a soup kind of dumpling. And now we're at the folding part. So grab yourself a wonton wrapper and just put small amount in the center. The wonton wrappers I tend to buy in Bangkok, they seem to be very small. So it really kind of depends on the size of wonton wrapper that you have as to how much filling you put in here. But you don't want to overfill it. Certainly don't want to underfill it either. But just go by what happens when you go to fold. You'll realize if it's overfilled because all the stuffing will come out. So now fold the corners together and then just press down one side Press down the other side, so we're making a triangle. Now we've got our triangle. And just brush the edges with a little bit of water. And then brush the tip of your triangle with water and fold everything together, two points. And there you have your little wonton. Now don't worry too much about your folding skills here, guys. With this kind of soupy wonton, uh, it kind of loses its shape a little bit anyway. So don't be too pedantic about it. Now this is going to make a whole bunch of wontons and if you're not going to use them all at once, these freeze really well. I like to freeze them on the tray first and then put them into some bags later. Then I've always got wontons and there's an emergency. It's always a wonton emergency. <laughs> Now, before we cook our wontons, let's come back and have a look at our soup broth. Now, this is smelling amazing. I love that ginger smell, oh, so comforting. Now, I just wanna take off any kind of scummy, foamy things that have risen to the surface. And now the final step to make our broth absolutely perfect is the seasoning. So this is totally going to depend on how salty the chicken stock was that you used, maybe even the brand of soy sauce that you used. So it's going to be a little different for everyone. Mm, I love that subtle spring onion flavor. I'm getting the ginger, just a little hint of garlic, and I can tell Got a really beautiful umami savory flavor that's come from the soy sauce and the dried shrimp ah so good all right does need a little bit of salt though i don't want to add more soy sauce because i don't want to color the stock too much but i do want a little bit of extra oomph there mm, and now we have hit the jackpot that is making everything sing beautiful yum now i just need to strain out my aromatics Oh, and you won't believe how much flavor has gone into this stock in such a small amount of time. And then pour your broth back into a clean saucepan. Mm. 
Now we can cook our wontons. And my biggest tip for you guys is never cook your wontons in the soup that you're going to be serving them in. Because the wontons have flour around the outside of them. That flour is going to come out in your stock, make it cloudy, make it thick, uh, alter the flavor. These are all things that we don't want. So make sure you've got a pot of boiling water separate to your soup and just add your beautiful little cute little wontons into there just give them a little stir make sure they're not sticking to the bottom and you want to cook these for about three or four minutes or until they're all floating at the surface and the wonton wrapper is beautifully soft and silky and of course the filling is cooked through now these are looking really good yes look at those okay just pop them into a serving bowl and then ladle over that beautiful, hot, savory broth. And then just a final scattering of a few spring onions. And that, my friends, is a little bowl of perfection. Very simple, nowhere to hide, so you've got to get it all right. Let's see how we've gone. Mmm, so silky smooth. Mmm. And that beautiful broth and the filling you you can't even tell the difference in texture between the beautiful soft wonton wrapper and that really soft filling and that's exactly what you want the least amount of resistance or well, you can eat more quicker <laughs> i hadn't thought about it like that before <laughs> oh these are so good guys can't wait for you to try them wow that's a giant one oh <laughs> That kind of sounded a bit rude. Sorry. <laughs> Believe it guys, we are going to make restaurant style Chinese hot and sour soup in 10 minutes flat. First thing we need to do is get our vegetables prepped. So I'm just going to go straight in with my carrot here. If you've got one of these julienne vegetable peelers, they are so great because you can just strip away the little fine shards of the carrot. Now, if you don't have one of these, don't worry, just buy shredded carrot already pre-done from your supermarket. It's pretty easy to find those these days. Okay, and to that we want to add a mixture of mushrooms. Now, I've got some enoki mushrooms here which I love for this soup because they turn into nice little silky tendrils all the way through a beautiful soup. And then just take your shiitake mushroom and the stem itself is a little bit tough. So just slice through that mushroom and then remove the stem and then just keep on slicing. Okay, so they go into our pot as well. And then I've got some firm tofu here and I'm just gonna slice that through the middle. And I want some fine slices of that. And then we want some bamboo shoots and some cooked chicken. Now I'm just using some rotisserie chicken that I've shredded up, but leftover roast chicken would be good as well. Or you could keep this meat free and leave the chicken out. Okay, and now for our chicken stock. So you know what? I'm just using a store-bought stock today because it's the middle of the week and I'm in a bit of a hurry. If you've got homemade stock, of course, go ahead and use that. And then we want to get this mixture gently bubbling away on our stove top. Mm, I love this soup. So most kids when they're at a Chinese restaurant are ordering, you know, the chicken and sweet corn soup. I was always the hot and sour kid. Ordering the hot and sour soup was my favorite. And now time to add the seasonings. So I've got some light soy sauce here, which is just a regular Chinese soy sauce. And then I've got some dark soy sauce here for some color, some white vinegar. Now, if you've got some Chinese black vinegar at home, go ahead and use that. That would be the traditional vinegar to use here, but white vinegar is much easier to find. So you can use that one and some pepper. So the main flavors in this soup are sour, salty, and then a really good hit of pepper. So I'm going to put quite a bit of pepper in there. And that is the hard part done, folks. We are just now waiting for this to bubble away, all those flavors to infuse and become nice and tasty. Oh, I just love the color of this soup. It's like autumn leaves, just lovely. Okay, so those mushrooms have softened now. It's only been a couple of minutes and I'm gonna add in some corn flour mixed with a little bit of water because of course this style of soup is quite thick. So I'm gonna add this in. And just like that, 
Our soup is turning beautifully thick and glossy. I just want to let that bubble away a few more minutes to thicken up a little bit. And now let's try this out and see. Mm, that's good. I'm loving those really nice sour flavors, but you know what? I think I'm going to add a little bit more vinegar and this is where your own personal taste will come into it. Add in some more vinegar, a little bit of salt if you think it needs it, because that of course depends on your chicken stock, how salty that was to start with. And because I like things spicy, I'm going to add in a little bit more black pepper. Such a simple soup, but so ultra comforting. All that's left now is to serve up and just sprinkle with a little bit of spring onion.